ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونظيرا بين يدي الساء من يدع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعسب ما فلا يضر إلا نفسه فقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فقال عز وجل شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوحا والذي أوحينا إليك وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى أن أقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه كبر على المشركين ما تدعوهم إليه الله يجتبي إليه من يشاء ويهدي إليه من ينيب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزفنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزفنا اجتنابا اللهم ألحمني رشدي وعزني من شر نفسي يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على الإيمان وعلى الدينك وعلى تعاتك آمين اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين This month is in recent Islamic history has some importance which I will be talking about about some events that took place about 80 years ago that relate to this month that are very important for Muslims to keep in mind. But before I talk about that, I want to go over, inshallah I will have enough time to go over three ayat, or at least the first ayat, and to explain some of the implications of this ayat for all of the Muslims. And this is one of those aspects of our deen, this is one of those aspects of our Islam that for the most part Muslims are not aware of, they're not mindful of. And so as time goes by, it's out of sight, out of mind type of situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Shara'a lakum min ad-deen. Shara'a, you all know the word sharia. And this is one of those words used in Quran to make something mandatory. Like kutiba alaykum us-sayyam. Kutiba means I've ordained it for you, I've written it for you, it's done. Shara'a means I made it part of sharia, it has to be done. Shara'a lakum min ad-deen. It is part of the sharia of your deen. What is about to be mentioned. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى And then, second command. In fact, there is no ayah in the whole of Qur'an that has more emphasis than this ayah in terms of commands. You know, even to the point of majority of the times Allah will give a command. أَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ Establish the prayers. If it's a very high command, Allah will give the command and the negation together. For example, اعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا Worship Allah and don't make any partners with Him. It's a higher level of command. But in this case, there are two commands, then a command and then a negation. So four commands to give one command. So think of the importance of this ayah. Meaning it is so important that there is no ayah that is this much emphasized. And in fact, there is one command that has to do with the whole surah, which I will come to, which goes back to this ayah. So this is what you have to stick to. This is what you have to call to. Anyway, Allah says, It is made the sharia of your deen, this is part of your Islam, has to be part of your mindfulness, your part of your awareness, 
Wasa is a very famous ayah which we all know the word wasa. And we commanded man in regards to his parents. So Allah said, I give you a command. Wasa means to command also. I give you a command in regards to your parents. In the same way, Wasa biha Ibrahim. And when Ibrahim gave a command to his children. So shara made to make a command. Shara lakum in dini ma wasa wasa also used to show that this is a command. Shara lakum in dini ma wasa bihi. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ So the same command has been being given to you that was given to Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Meaning this is a command that is about to come up that we're going to discuss. is a command that was given to all the Prophets because as Allah will then mention to again emphasize. You know Allah does this. وَعْضَنَ عَلَيْهِ حَقًا فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِينَ Allah will say it this way. I, I said this here and in Torah and in Jeel, you will find it there. This is such a big thing. It's such an important thing. So in the same way, And it is the same command that we gave to Ibrahim and Musa and Isa, which is what? Now, this is the difficult part. <laughs> An deen Establish my deen. Make my deen, my Islam, a reality, a practical reality. Where people can see this is Islam. Oh, this is Islam in practice. Build a community where people can go to. Where people say, oh, this is Islam. This is where you know, at the very minimum, like in America, we have a very good example. There are some Muslim communities, African American Muslim communities. They have done away with the drugs in their local area. We have in the south side of Chicago like this, Imam Siraj is like this, where people know, the community knows, the local people know that the Muslims came here, they did away with the drugs. And then the good families, they start moving into that neighborhood. And even the non-Muslim children of that neighborhood play in the local masjid. Of that, I don't know how many of Muslims that are, you know, a part of the middle class or upper class have actually gone to the masajids of some of the African American brothers and seen the work that they've done in the types of communities they have created. Even in Washington, D.C., there are some masjids by African American communities. They're not rich people, but they've created a community that is a source of, 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 of you can say, a, it's grounded place for the entire community, Muslims and non-Muslims, because even when Muslims come out, and the husband's coming out with his wife, with his children, and other people, non-Muslims, they see that, oh, okay, these people, you know, they're strong with their family. At the, establish Islam as an example for people to see Go to a Masjid al uh, Masjid, uh, I forget the Masjid name, uh, the one in, there's one in Los Angeles. In fact, it was built by Mike Tyson. He paid $200,000 for that Masjid, for a group of African American brothers over there. And uh, there's Masjids here in Washington, D.C. Go to an African American Masjid and see how you can contrast Islam in practice, because over there, there is a type of geographical integrity which we don't have here that all the Muslims they move towards and around the masjid. And then that way, the people of the community can clearly see, oh, okay, these are Muslims, and the others are not Muslims. At the very least, start at that level, but then, ultimately, the goal is, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّى بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى أَنْ أَقِيمُ الدِّينِ Establish my Islam. The ultimate level is, 
that you want to show people what is Islam, where you can tell non-Muslim journalists, where you can tell non-Muslim politicians, come here and see, this is Islam in practice. The whole world is looking for solutions, help, solutions, solutions, how can we solve this problem and that pro I mean, there's so many issues, right? The whole world is looking for solutions and Islam has many of the solutions right off the back. Show them a society where they can go and see, oh, this is how, this is where there's justice and fair play. This is where people can actually, the journalists or the thinkers, the intellectuals can come and see a society. Oh, this is where Islam is in practice. This is not just theory. Allah says this is a command of all commands. Some scholars have called this Asrul Asul. This is the the root of the root, Aslul Asul, because when this is there, everything else is there. When this is not there, nothing is there. Islam is just theory then. It's just an idea. Just to give you one example, just one example, and I won't go into much details. In the field of economics, I'm going to give you one example. When you go for a loan, the first thing that is asked and the most important thing that's asked is give a collateral. But in the Islamic banking system, because it's not built upon riba, but it's built upon musharaka and mudariba, the bank is actually investing in that business. It is an owner of that business till the business owner buys out that business. So they're not only interested in, oh, give us a collateral, they're interested in the success of that business where they're putting their money. Number one. Number two, if you can prove, because there will be a business center for that bank that decides, okay, these are the investments we actually want to pursue in. And instead of bank holders getting interest, they will get a return on investment from that bank that the decisions that that bank has made in which, in which they will in, be investing in, instead of getting a return on interest from money that is borrowed that might come back to the bank or may not come back to the bank, the business actually decides, okay, you know, is this a good business to invest in or not? Is this a good idea? Anybody seen that program called the Shark Tank? Every bank will be like a Shark Tank, where you come up with the idea and you present your idea. And maybe you're not rich, but you have a great idea. The bank's like, wait, this is a great idea. All the numbers look good. Let's invest in this idea. And then the bank doesn't get one or two or three percent interest rate, but it gets an a return on investment, which may be a hundred percent, maybe fifty percent, maybe forty percent. But if it's a good bank, with good business sense, with good number sense, good financial sense, if you're investing in a hundred different companies, right, and if thirty go broke, well, you still have sixty that are doing be better, but you're getting more than one or two or three percent return back. And you're not burdening people with high interest rates that they can't then pay back. And then they not only fail in their business, but they also lose the one thing that they had that they put as collateral that they worked for all their life. So the Islamic banking system, it would work by being not just a bank that lends you money, but it would be a partner in the investment idea that you have. And it's not necessary at that point for it to just see how what's your collateral or what your down payment is but would be actually interested in hearing what your idea is what is your idea what is your idea worth maybe the bank will ask for equity we'll be your partner but we will want four percent equity in the business we want five percent equity in, in in the in the profits for as long as the business remains so I'm just giving one example. Another example I'll give you. We have the healthcare problem. It can be solved very easily. You know, if you take the Islamic principles and the Islamic spirit, for example, if every doctor donates one day of his life, you know, the Muslims do this in some Muslim countries. If a Muslim doctor donates one day of his life every five years, free, there are so many doctors that the problem would be solved at the very basic level. 
there's, you know, 10,000 doctors and they're giving one day every five years, the problem to a large degree is solved. They just have to go to that volunteer center, then the only thing that they have to be aware of is the, uh, that they have to get funds for is the basic medicine. But anyway, these are just some ideas, but Islamic thinkers, if the Islamic, if Islam was put into practice and the Muslim intellectuals got together, they can come up with a lot more brilliant ideas than what I've mentioned here. But Allah says, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ it is part of your sharia, of your deen, shara lakum min ad-deen ma wasa, of what has been commanded to you. Bihi nuha wa ladhi awhayna ilayk. What was commanded to Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, and what was commanded to you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ma wasa, again wasa again. Wa ma wasa bihi Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa an aqimu ad-deen. Establish my deen. وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ And do not be divided in regards to this issue. This is the negation. Do this. Work for this. Have this goal. Have this dream. That dream that one day people can see Islam in practice at the legal level, at the economic, social, judicial, political level. وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِي كَبُرْ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا تَدْرُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ It is very hard, difficult on the mushrikeen, the people that associate partners to God, to what you are calling them. Now remember this, تَدْرُو دَعْوَى Same, just remember this word. تَدْرُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ What you are calling to them is very difficult. For man to give up legislative authority in this world, for some people, is very difficult. Again, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Please come forward. Then Allah says, Allah yajtabi ilayhi man yasha'u wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to, to guide whoever He wants and He guides those who turn towards Him. And if you don't do this job, if you don't have this dream, if you don't have this goal as a Muslim community that we want to establish Islam as an example for people to see, then what happens? I definitely needed more time to talk about this, but inshallah we'll go to the next ayah. Now, what happens if you don't do this? Establishing Islam is as important as establishing Salah. In fact, we have forgotten our old books. Do you know who gives the Jummah Khutbah? The Khalifa gives the Jummah Khutbah. He talks about the issues of the community that he's aware of from all corners of the world. And then that speech of his as a Khalifa goes back to the whole Muslim world. He talks about policies and issues and what he expects from the people of his country. There's a state of union speech every week in Islam. Not just for political books, but actually talking about what needs to be done. And the biggest speech done by the Khalifa is Hajj al-Akbar, where on the day of Hajj, the Khalifa speaks to the whole Ummah again. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know how Jum'ah was? <coughs> we have small masjid, then we have a Jamir masjid. You know Jamir masjid, the concept of the central masjid is where the governor or the local authority, the leader of the local authority, he gives the Jummah Khutbah. That's how it was supposed to be. Anyway, 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you don't work towards this task, this goal of making Islam a reality for people to see, how are people going to know Islam is the truth? If they can't see Islam in practice. If intellectuals can't come and actually observe, this is Islam in practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكُمُ الْعِلْمِ This is the biggest ailment of the Muslim world and particularly the Islamic scholarship of today. وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكُمُ الْعِلْمِ They did not get divided from this goal. Until knowledge came to them. When knowledge came to them, why did they get divided? Because knowledge came to them and everyone was like, I'm right. Me and my shaykh, we're right. My maslik is right. My school of thought is right. And the others are all wrong. And Islam became from becoming a deen, which is for the whole ummah, you're now just serving your selective sheep in your, in your maslik. So the, the Brailvis have the boxing gloves against the Deobandis and the Deobandis have boxing gloves against the Salafis and you can just go on and on and everybody is just throwing boxing gloves against each other and we call it Islamic work. And the real task, which is to show Islam to the world, when that goes away, وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكُمُ الْعِلْمِ بَغِيًا بَيْنَهُمْ Out of out of their own ego rebellion attitude this has happened because one person thinks I got the answer to one question and then the ego takes over and then the groups are made and the groups fight with each other can't get along not just in terms of Muslim but in also in, in all other of its forms please come forward And when this happens amongst you, that you get divided away from the real goal, and you get divided into little groups, and you have your sheikh and his little sheep of 50, 60, 100, 200, 2,000 people, 10,000 people. If this happens, then what happens? وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُصَمَّةٌ تَسَمَّةٌ لَقُضِيَ الْعَمَّةٌ لَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ Allah says, if it was to be, if there was not an appointed time of day of judgment, if this happened, I would have just wrapped it up. It's, this is not worth it. It's just worth wrapping it up. لَقُضِيَ الْعَمَّةٌ But this is what will happen in your lifetime. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُورِثُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَفِي شَكِّمْ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيبٍ Those people then who will inherit the Book of Allah, they inherit the Qur'an, but they will be in doubt if this is Qur'an or not. Why? Because they saw the parents and Muslims just fighting each other all the time. It's like when Christians, I don't know how many Christians you've talked to, but Christians, you know, they have so many denominations, the Lutheran, the Baptist, the Methodist, and so on. You know, just like when you go to a Methodist church and they tell you in the Methodist church, don't go to the Lutheran church, and the Lutheran church tells you don't go to the Baptist church, and the Baptist church tells you don't, oh, Catholics, they're not really Christians. I don't know if you ever heard these conversations, but just like that, when Muslim children hear, oh, that masjid, or those people, or that, how are they going to respect Islam? The real goal, the real goal, to show Islam to people in practice, to show Islam people in, in, as, as, in, as a practical demonstration of what Islam is, is gone. Today in the world, there's not two inches where there's Islam. So why am I talking about this today? Again, I didn't get to finish uh, the actual conversation that I wanted to have. I actually wanted to talk about the, the fall of the <coughs> the fall of the Khilafah uh, today because it happened in March 3rd um, 
1342, about 78 years ago, I believe, on the 28th of uh, Rajab, when the Khalifa of that time, Abdul Hamid II, he was the last Khalifa of the Muslims. He was the Khalifa of the entire Muslim world. But I want to end with, because now it's time to end, inshallah, um, I'm going to do the second khutbah and then mention a few more things, inshallah. Please come forward. There's, uh, you know, this is the time where a lot of people start coming in, so just uh, move forward, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> قل آمنت بما أنزل الله من كتاب وأمرت لأعذل بينكم الله وربنا وربكم لنا أعمالنا ولكم أعمالكم لا حجة بيننا وبينكم وإليه الله يجمع بيننا وإليه المصير رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأخطة من لساني So after Allah gives the command establish Islam if you don't what will be the evil result of that with your children? And then, third time again. فَذَٰلِكَ <clears> فَدْعُوا <throat> O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam This is what you have to call towards. فَذَٰلِكَ فَدْعُوا وَاسْتَقِمْ And be steadfast. وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ وَأَهُمْ Don't follow their desires. <coughs> Don't compromise Islam. وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَحْوَاءَهُمْ قُلْ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say آمَنْتُ I believe بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ كِتَابٍ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ كِتَابٍ I believe in whatever has been given to me from the book. وَأُمِرْتُ لِأَعْدِلَ بَيْنَكُمْ And I have been commanded to do justice between you, bring Islam between you, to bring justice between you. And if Muslims have this good intention, they want to bring Islam into reality, they want to show the world what is Islam, what does the Khilafah look like, then Allah then says, Allah is our Lord, our Rabb, our caretaker, and your caretaker. لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ For you are your deeds, for us is our deeds. Maybe some people have good intentions, they want Islam to grow. But they may have some differences. Their attitude is not بَغْيَمْ بَيْنَهُ But their attitude is Allah هُوَ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ Allah is my Rabb and your Rabb. لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ For me is my deeds and for you is your deeds. You'll get your good deeds and I'll get my good deeds. Allahu yajma'una yajma'una Allah will bring us together there will be a way inshallah one day we will be on we will be together la hujjata baynana wa baynakum there's no argument between me and you we have the same goal same purpose Allahu yajma'un yajma'u baynana wa baynana wa ilayhi al-masir and in the end we have to stand before him anyway but I don't want Muslims to forget these ayat, not one, but many of them. And we have to remember that it is our goal, it is our dream, that we can, that we can establish a living Islamic reality. Because otherwise, it will be what the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه Nothing will remain of Islam but its name. 
and nothing will remain of Islam but his name, and that the only place where kids will learn about Islam is Sunday school. لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا إلا اسمه ولا يبقى من القرآن إلا رسمه and nothing will remain of the Quran except for its letters. People won't know what it really means. This saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 